Video podcasts are an amazing way to grow on YouTube. They can be conversational, fun, and provide you with tons of content for repurposing. Right now, YouTube is pushing podcasts, which means there's a massive opportunity for you to get discovered. But creating video podcasts can seem a little overwhelming. Which is why we're breaking down this video podcast setup to help you get some information and inspiration for yours. Today, we're here in the studio taking a look at the podcast setup. We'll be talking about the cameras, lighting, audio, and some power tips. Let's get started with cameras. So when it comes to video podcasts, something that's really helpful is having multiple angles. This can help you know, refresh and keep the viewer's attention. It will also help you cover up mistakes or just piece together the conversation differently. For my setup here today, I'm rocking a couple of different cameras, starting with the Sony a7C paired with a 20 millimeter 1.8 lens. This is sort of the, uh, the main shot. And whenever you're setting up your podcast, if you are gonna be running multiple angles, you'll need to kind of decide which one is like your establishing shot, which is gonna be the widest shot to give context to the viewers. Most of the times this will have any of the speakers who are in the podcast all in that shot. To accompany the main wide shot, I have two side angles. Both of these are going to be more close up on whoever's talking. On this side, I've got a Sony ZV-E10 paired with a 55 millimeter lens. And on that side, I have a Sony A7 III paired with an 85 millimeter lens. Both of those options are gonna give a nice, you know, more punched in look so that you can really focus on whoever is, you know, talking at that moment. And lastly, I have my phone, which is capturing a nice vertical shot of the conversation, which comes in handy for repurposing. When it comes to positioning the cameras, I really like to think of it as, you know, one wide shot and then, you know, close up angles kind of coming from a, a 45 degree angle. These by no means are the best option for cameras. They're just what I have. And I always recommend using what you have and making the most of it. But I will put some of my top recommendations in general in the description below. Lighting for this setup really isn't too complicated. We basically just have one giant softbox lantern, which is serving as the main key light for the shot. And then we have two backlights, which work really well for creating you know, a little bit of an outline, and they add a little bit of warmth and color to the shot. For the key light, I'm using the Godox SZ150R. And for the backlights, I'm using the Godox TL120s. One of the benefits of using the same lighting company for all of your lights is that oftentimes you'll be able to control them all with one remote or app. In this case, I have a remote, so I can easily be sitting in frame, looking at my shot and start dialing in the color temperature or the brightness, and then I can switch around and start adjusting one of the backlights. If I wanna go for more of like a RGB look, I can do that, and it's really easy to sort of custom dial everything in to get the look that I want. I place the softbox in the middle between both of the subjects to kind of light up our faces, and I place the backlights facing the back of the subjects to help create an outline around them. If you wanna learn more lighting techniques like this that can really help level up your content, head on over to learnvideolighting.com. This is my lighting course where I've taken everything I've learned about lighting over the course of my career and placed it into these power packed sessions to help you go further faster. You can check it out at the link in the description below. Audio is obviously one of the most important aspects of a video podcast setup because there's still going to be those platforms where it's audio only. For my setup, I'm using the Shure MB7 microphones. These are really nice because they do XLR or USB, which means you can run them into you know, mixing boards or you can run them straight to a computer. You can even run them into a phone. There's a lot of different ways that you can use them and the sound quality is great. When it comes to actually recording the audio, I use the Zoom H6 audio recorder. I really love this handy little device. It's small, it's compact, and it doesn't need to be hard plugged in to power like a lot of other options. This really makes it portable and I've taken it you know, to record out in the field and do a lot of different things like that, which kind of opens up the door for how you could you know, use your video podcast. Having an audio device like this is really important because you'll wanna walk away from the shoot 
having separated individual audio tracks so that you can mix everything later. There's just gonna be times in a podcast where you may need to mute somebody else or you know, you need to lower a laugh or raise a quiet moment. And being able to have these individual audio tracks makes this possible. And that's why you wanna have a device like this. You could use something larger like the Rode Podcaster or a mixing board, but for me, I love the simplicity and the compact you know, functionality of this audio recorder. A quick tip when it comes to recording your audio is to make sure that you don't run the audio too hot where it gets into the red on your audio meter. What I like to do most of the time is to aim to get my audio at around negative 12. This will give me plenty of room to simply raise it a little bit later in post-production. But if you go the opposite end and everything's in the red, it will just be distorted and there's really no recovering from that. I tend to think of audio levels a lot like I think of exposure in photography. When you run your ISO too high on a camera, the image starts to get grainy and fall apart and you can't really recover from that. With audio, it's very similar. When you get into the red, everything gets actually noisy and distorted. If you can just aim to get those audio levels around negative 12, Typically, I found that that works really well for me in having enough headroom to just raise it a little bit and get some really crisp and clean sounds. So the great thing about video podcast is you not only have access to those audio platforms, but to YouTube as well, which really opens up a whole new audience for you. And because we're dealing with video now, it unlocks even more audiences because you can repurpose your long form videos into short form vertical content, which means you can hit new audiences on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts. So now you have this whole new reach, whereas before you were just limited to audio platforms. Yeah, and I think something else that's really important is while you do have the video, you can't rely on video. Audio is the number one most important thing. Always be thinking of the audio consumer while you're making your podcast. Will the audio clip be able to stand on its own merit? And I think one of the most important things is to just have fun and be personal. Yeah, ultimately podcasts are all about storytelling and laughing and you know sharing a good tip they're or so in, relational yeah it's super relational it's a lot of back and forth and so you know i think that it's a, a really important aspect of you know a podcast like you could have all the technical stuff right and you could even have some good information but i think what's going to create raving fans is if you can actually just light up and have some fun with the content too all right, if you guys wanna see more of this video podcast set up in action, continue on to this video here where I sit down with Creative Ryan and talk a whole bunch of YouTube strategy. Also, we've placed links to all of this gear in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay creative. Peace.